Okay, here's another thing. Everybody thinks um, Doctor Who is, modern Doctor Who is very fast cutting, and uh, quite often it's fast cutting. But actually, one of the one of the little games we tended to play was trying to find scenes which you could actually do in very very few shots. Um, and as long as we'll, basically in television, uh, producers and execs always get terribly worried that the audience are going to go and make a cup of tea, and so they're terribly worried if you don't keep cutting it. And so we would just put these things in, which actually have almost no cuts in them at all, just just to, just to smugly prove them wrong, um, if, if we could. Uh, and this is a this is a scene from Crimson Horror where I think I think we have shot the last over 30 seconds, which in modern TV times is like that's a cup of tea, dinner, everything. You know, they're <laughs> terrified of this, so just just have a look at this. It's it's quite an interesting thing because you do think of Doctor Who as quite a fast fast cut program, at least I do. Um, so. Hello, Doctor. Yes. Hello. material than you than you want. So sometimes sometimes, uh, sometimes the challenge is to find very simple ways of doing it and, and I think to, you know to me I much prefer that than sort of cutting away to things because you know, I think I think you stay with it. Um, that was just um, and it, and again here's another one where this is basically Doctor Who you make about two minutes of Doctor Who in the morning, and then you make about four minutes of Doctor Who in the afternoon. But really, you make most of Doctor Who between 6:30 p.m. and 7, when you all suddenly go fucking hell, we're doomed, we're never getting done. And this is a this is a typical scene of that, which is probably shot in five minutes. I mean, really, like at the end of the day, and it's a lot of dialogue, and it had to be very fast moving. It's another bit from the snowman, and this is a this is a testament to Matt Smith's ability to run around and do it very consistently. And this is the camera operator, a guy called Joe Russell, who's him and Matt, they're, they're, they're like lovers. It's just such a nice thing, they sort of dance together and things like that, it's great. Um, and this is a very, very fast scene, but actually you'll notice it's basically basically one shot, and then you come back for one extra shot. But it's, this is again, this is to do with how you make things rapidly and, and simply. Um, but again, it's actually technically very, very difficult, because basically, if you look at the camera operating and Matt Smith's movement, it's very, very precise. And I, I take no credit for this, I just take credit for being in the same room as the guys who know how to do this. Um, so I will do this. Hello, Then you get to Doctor Who, where you actually do endless amounts of cutting and endless amounts of silly tra transition shots and things like this. And this, this was one of the most fun things I got to direct, which was the, the flashback sequence of Crimson Horror. And you know, I really like it because it's completely nuts. I mean, it's, complete, it's, a, it's a complete little episode in itself, and it's the idea of doing incredibly rapid storytelling. And again, look, look for, you know, it's full of sort of 
sort of smart alec transitions and things like that, just to make it bounce along incredibly quickly. But again, it's, it's more or less a whole little mini episode. Um, again, you'll see like some scenes are just held in one shot, and others are, are actually rather complicated and fuzzy. So just have a look. <coughs> Steady camera shots. 
the steady cam shot coming back with them, the steady cam shot behind them, um, to do an incredible amount of um, exposition in the scene. You have to explain the whole plot to everyone. Um, and rather than just having standing in a room saying it, it's always keeping it moving. So you, so you sort of don't notice, the idea is you don't notice it's expositional. Um, so again, it's two shots, there's nothing, there's nothing to it. It's got, it's got to take a nice thing and it starts as two profiles, then it goes to a deep two shot, then it goes to two singles, and it's all, it's only two shots. So, it's the kind of thing you come up with when you run out of time. <laughs> This. And then this is this, this at the end of this scene is just this complicated shot. And there's a, I think I've talked about this to people a lot before. There's this problem in Doctor Who, or an issue, or a, or a something. Um, have to believe that the inside of the TARDIS is bigger than the outside of the TARDIS. And of course, it's really, really annoying to show um, that the inside is bigger than the outside because I have to let you into the terrible secret. The inside isn't actually bigger when you're filming it. And so, so what we wanted to do was do the shot where you actually proved once and for all that you go into it and it's bigger on the inside. And because this was the first moment that you see the new TARDIS, we thought we would do it at this moment. Um, and funny enough, I had to fight incredibly hard. Nobody wanted to do this shot because uh, it's reasonably expensive and slow to do it. And I fought and I fought and I fought and they eventually let me do it. Actually, I think they didn't let me do it. I think they just didn't notice that I was doing it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and basically, it's a very simple. It's actually quite simple. It's, it all involves... Uh, you just build the CGI exterior of the TARDIS. It's not, it's not, nowadays, it's not terribly complicated to do, but I just want to do that one where you actually... This is now a fact. The inside is bigger than the outside. You can't argue about it anymore. It's, it's, there's no trickery involved. It's just you're seeing it absolutely literally. So have a look at this scene. Just one for the... Imagine the number of times um, uh, Matt and Jenna have to run up and down the thing and how irritated they must have been by the end of it and how much the set wobbles, but don't worry about that. And then the, uh, the big complicated shot, um, which isn't actually that complicated if you're lots of money. actually swing open fully because the box is in the way. That's a fucking TARDIS. It's the inside that's bigger than the outside. You can start the fucking door. It's, 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 you've got a hole of whatever inside except that door doesn't work. But don't, it's like, you, you get on set occasionally, you go, oh, how did they do that? You know, um, so that door doesn't, so watch out for it, doesn't actually quite open. Um, <laughs> and then, just to go back to my favourite film ever, um, Come on with the rain, I will smile on my face. And it was a very nice theory where you, you see the fact that, in fact, I just 
any opportunity ripped off the shot that I like to rip off. Um, but it, anyway, you, get, you get the idea, it's not the technology. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's all the bits I have to show you today.